Okay, I'm going to give a brief overview of uh, Monte Carlo simulation using the Palisades at risk tool. And uh, we're going to estimate the ending portfolio values for an investment in an S&P like portfolio. Here I filled in some of it. So we're going to start with $10,000 and we're going to add $10,000 every year. Uh, these numbers, average rate of return and standard deviation are inflation adjusted. And I got the data for this from moneychimp.com. So uh, the question we want to answer is, uh, what's the probability that after investing $10,000 a year for 30 years that we have at least $1 million in inflation adjusted dollars? All right, so to run the simulation, what we need uh, at a minimum is some kind of forecast or output cell, which I will I'll put here in B10. Uh, and then we also need at least one uncertainty cell, all right? And we're going to have 30 uncertainty cells. So I'm going to put them uh, starting in B12. And this is going to be the uncertain return we get every year. All right, so I'm going to select B12. I'm going to go to where it says define distribution. I'll click that. I'm going to select the normal distribution here. And by default, uh, at risk sort of puts in some values for us. All right, so it thinks the mean is a zero and the standard deviation is 10. All right, and we just want to replace that value or those values uh, with, with the values from our models. All right, I'll click in uh, the first cell, uh, then I'll minimize the dialog box, click on B4, and then for the standard deviation, I'll click on B5. I'll expand the dialog box and then click OK. All right, so here's one random possible return. It's 5.24%. All right, so if we get in this cell, all right, we can see the formula it puts in there, all right? So we can directly uh, actually type in risk normal and then the, the two parameters that we need for that. Um, and obviously, I don't want to go into the defined distributions uh, dialog box 30 times. So what I'm going to do is modify this formula all right, to always point at the mean and standard deviation that we're interested in, and then I'll copy the formula down. Okay, so I can do that quickly by just double-clicking on the fill handle. Okay, and I pre-filled the formula for our first year's ending balance. Basically, what I did was to take the uh, the value, the starting value, which uh, in year one is the $10,000, uh, I multiplied that by one plus our random rate of return. And then after that was done, I added uh, the $10,000. All right, for year two, the starting amount is going to be whatever the ending balance was in year one. All right, we're going to multiply it by one plus the rate of return. All right, and then we're going to add the 10,000. All right, and I'll absolute reference that. And uh, once that's done, I can just copy that formula down. All right, so here what we're left with is one possible ending balance for a stream of 30 years of uh, returns in the S&P 500. All right, so this one turns out pretty favorably. All right, it comes up to be well over the million dollars uh, that we're looking for. Um, the problem is... I have no idea if this is going to be what the returns are for the next 30 years. Okay, so that's why we're going to basically run uh, several thousand iterations of possible ending balances for each year. All right, and then we're going to characterize that in an output cell here in B10, and uh, we'll be able to have a probability statement about what's the likelihood of having the million dollars. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do then is uh, put a formula in here to pick off the value that I want. All right, and I'm going to use the index function to do this. All right, and I'm going to look at the stream of ending balances, and then I'm going to point at the cell that says how long are we going to invest for. All right, so we'll be able to vary this if we want. If if it turns out that we can retire early, uh, then we can run the simulation uh, with fewer years. All right, so once the formula is done, uh, I'm going to go up uh, into the, uh, the ribbon here, 
find add output and click that button all right if you want to change the the caption here you can i'm just going to leave it as is and i'll click ok all right and so with all that done we're now ready to run our simulation all right and uh, i'm going to look at this area here the simulation group for just a few uh, seconds before i do that uh, first of all we were going to check how many iterations uh, we want to run, okay? And, and probably 5,000 is fine. The more iterations I run, obviously the longer the simulation is gonna take. Uh, we'll end up with a smoother histogram if I if I run more iterations, all right? But 5,000 should be enough for this demonstration. Uh, we're gonna do one simulation, all right? And then I'm just gonna look at settings for a quick minute so we can see what we can change in here. Uh, I'm gonna look at sampling real quick because there's a couple of ways we can sample. All right, and by default, At Risk wants to use Latin Hypercube. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that to Monte Carlo. And it, it's just a, a different way of generating the random numbers. Okay, the Latin Hypercube will ensure that the random returns more closely follow a normal distribution with the characteristics that we outlined, while the Monte Carlo uh, has a more random characteristic. Uh, the only other thing. Uh, in here um, that you might want to change. All right, the the uh, the way they generate the land, random numbers. I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, but you could, if you want, uh, change this to fixed. And then, uh, if you run your simulation multiple times, it will use the same random number stream for each run. And then that way, whatever you changed, you can kind of isolate the impact of that change. Okay, I'm going to leave it at choose randomly. We're not going to run that many simulations. So I'll click OK. And now we're finally ready to run the simulation and answer our question. So I'm going to click on Start Simulation. Okay, so once the simulation is done, uh, what you get is a histogram of all the possible ending balances. What, uh, by default, at-risk does is give you a 90% tolerance interval of those ending balances. So, all right, I can kind of click on this dragger here and drag it into uh, wherever, wherever I want the ending value to be. All right, and so what we're seeing up here for numbers, okay, is sort of a scaled ending balance. All right, so it's not showing us millions it's showing us in fractional millions. All right, so here uh, it's showing us um, the uh, the cutoff line at uh, 900,000. Up at the top here, it's kind of moving around here. Uh, it is showing us that, okay, way out here in the tail, it's possible to have values upwards of $16 million, but we can see by the, the density that that's not all that likely. Okay, so I am going to just leave this out at positive infinity here so that we can talk about uh, the left side of the distribution. We're not really that interested. In the right side, we're pretty much sure that we're not getting anything up here. Okay, so I can just click on the value and then just type in uh, where I want the cutoff to be exactly. All right, so that one represents a million dollars. All right, and we can see that well, there is a 54% chance that I have less than a million dollars, okay, and a 45% chance that I have somewhere over a million dollars. All right, so not all that favorable. Over here on the right, the, uh, the output we see, there's lots of other descriptive statistics, okay, and uh, we're probably most interested with the percentiles down here towards the bottom. All right, so we can get an idea that, oh, so there's a 99% probability that we would have more than 221,000. All right, and then if we look at something like the 25th percentile where, okay, we're three times as likely to have more than that than not, uh, we can see it's around 600,000 based on, on uh, the inputs that we used. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. All right, and then we'll just talk a little bit about uh, some of the other uh, buttons out here. All right. Um, one thing people like to do sometimes is run reports. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to go in here and at least show it to you. All right. It's not super useful for what we're doing. All right. But probably the most useful report is this one, the output results summary. And it basically takes a snapshot of that screen I was just looking at and places it either another workbook 
or in another worksheet if that's what you want. Okay, sometimes people like to look at the actual data that was generated. Uh, so I can go ahead and look at the descriptive statistics for the output here and also each one of our inputs. All right, so we can sort of look at the characteristics of each one of these cells if we want to. All right, and, and you can export that if you want. All right, so I'm not going to do anything with it. Uh, another thing you can do is look at the individual data points from every iteration. And again, you can export those if that's what you want to do. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is sort of uh, stress test this or test some scenarios. All right, so we can see that, okay, it's not super favorable for us to have a million dollars. All right, there was about a 45% chance that was going to happen. Maybe we don't like those odds. So we want to see what we can do to improve them. All right. So there's a few things we can do. All right. We could, if we had the means, I guess, start with a bigger uh, initial investment. All right. We could uh, delay retirement somehow. All right. Or we could add additional uh, additional monies every year. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and test that last scenario. And I'm going to do that using what's called a SIM table. All right. So at risk will allow us to run several simulations side by side uh, based on these different scenarios. All right. And to access this, I'm going to go to advanced analyses. All right. And I'm going to select advanced sensitivity analysis. And uh, this one already has one filled in. I'm going to go ahead and, and go in and show you what, uh, what it looks like. But generally what you would do is start in the output cell. All right. That's the cell you want to monitor. And then you would click add. All right, and I'm going to go in, hit in and edit this so we can see what I did. Now, by default, when you come in here, um, it will say distribution. All right, and so, yeah, we can, we can make a probability distribution of how much to add every year if we want, but I'm going to use a deterministic method instead and say that let's test three different values, the initial 10,000, uh, 12,500 and 15,000. All right. And I, I add these just by clicking in here and typing. Okay. And if you want, you can add a name to the analysis. I'm going to go ahead and leave it since we're only doing one and I'll click okay there. Okay. We're going to make sure that this uh, references a table of values instead of an Excel range. But yes, I could refer to a range of cells out in the spreadsheet if I wanted. And then we're going to have to make sure that the reference points at uh, B7, which is um, the cell where uh, we're going to put in those different values. Okay, once that's done, I can click OK. All right, and uh, you might want to change the options as well. In fact, we do want to change the options. Um, I'm just going to uncheck some of these because some of them are not very useful. All right, in different situations, yes, you would probably want to look at some of these different graphs. All right, particularly a tornado chart might be useful or a box and whiskers plot. All right, we're just going to get a summary and a quick report. All right, and I'm going to change, uh, the default here is going to say mean. I'm going to change it to percentile. And when you change it to percentile, you have to manually type in the percentile you're interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's the 25th percentile. All right, and again, sort of, the idea here is that, okay, we have a three times uh, more likelihood of having more than less. So uh, I've just sort of arbitrarily decided that's a good cutoff. All right, I'm going to click OK. And then uh, to run it, we're going to click Analyze. It's going to warn you that it's going to run three simulations. And do I really want to do that? I'll say yes. And this will generate the results and put them in a separate work. We can sort of compare things. Okay, so here's our comparison of the uh, cumulative curves. Um, we can see it's getting more favorable the more money we add every year. All right, if we want to sort of quantify that a little bit, we can look at some uh, rough descriptive statistics here. Okay, and so it tells us the mean value, which isn't all that useful in an investment situation. All right, the min and the max, well, the max isn't so useful. The min is nice to know. All right, we can see that's increasing as we might expect. Uh, the fifth percentile is pretty useful. Okay, so there's a 95% chance, all right, of having over 320,000 in the base case situation. 
All right, and that moves to another hundred fifty thousand uh, if we if we add fifteen thousand instead of ten thousand per year. Okay. All right, I'll look at the summary or quick report. The graph isn't that exciting. It shows that the value is going up over time. All right. And then uh, this is where we actually see uh, the 25th percentile ending value. Okay. So uh, the bottom one happens to be the worst case. So it sorted it in, in terms of what's the best case. All right. We can see that uh, by adding an additional 5,000 per year, uh, the ending balance is improved by almost 300,000. All right. So definitely uh, much better. Still not. Uh, uh, up around that million dollars, all right, we'd have to add more than this, all right, but we have a much better shot of having the million dollars anyway. Okay, so I hope that helps with using at risk to run Monte Carlo simulation.